This is a video on uh, setting up inputs on this breakout board. Uh, this is a very simplified version. There's no other wires running out of it. We just have our power in. This supplies the breakout board with 12 to 24 volts of power, which will uh, activate our inputs over here. So most of the time when your box is powered, you're getting power. Actually, there's a little light right here when that LED is on. It lets you know that you're getting power onto your board. So you want to look for that LED. This is the row of inputs over here. Uh, if you look closely, above here you'll see, let me get my screwdriver, that this is pin 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, and ground. You can use any of these as inputs. And you could actually daisy, or, uh, put in series a bunch of switches, normally closed switches, which would bring the current through here. But anyway, for this case, we're going to use pin 10 as an input. Uh, and so I'll show you how to sh set that up right now. We come over to Mach 3. We go to Config. We go to Ports and Pins. We go to Input Signals. We'll scroll down to our where it says Inputs. You have options for Input 1, 2, 3, and 4. 1 and 2, if you have automatic spindle control, those are usually already taken. Um, so we'll just be safe and start with 3. It's arbitrary. You can choose whichever one you want. Uh, there's also more inputs for, these are specific for index. Uh, this would be for your motor encoder, or if you're going to do probing, this is another input. But these are all inputs, and you can choose whichever one you want. Uh, for this case, we'll just choose three. And like I said, we've chosen to put the wire in where it says pin 10 right here. And this is port 1. You only have one port most of the time. Um, but this is port 1, pin 10. So we'll go right over here, input 3. We're going to enable it first so we see a green check mark. We're going to select port 1. And then we're going to enter in pin 10 right here. Then click apply. Be sure to click apply. Then click OK. We'll click Reset, and now we want to see if that's working or not. So to check that, we come up to Diagnostics right here, click on it, and you can see that our input light under Input 3 is currently active. And so we'll touch these wires together like this. Now the switch is closed, so that input light went off. We'll open it up and now it's back on again. So that's kind of how I prefer to do wiring. So when it's normally closed, the signal is not active. Uh, when it opens up, the signal becomes active. That's the way you do limit switches. So you can run all the limit switches together and whenever a limit switch is broken, it, uh, it'll uh, stop your mill. But uh, so this is normally active when the switch is open. If we want to change that, so it's just the opposite, we go back over to inputs again. We go over to ports and pins, input signals, we scroll down. And we want to go, we want to select where it says active low. And that'll change the state. Click reset. Now you can see it's off when it's open. Now we'll touch them together again, and it comes on. That's usually better for like probing. But that's how it works. You just uh, run wires out of here. Like this next input would be pin 11. We'd run a wire out of here to whatever we're going to uh, connect to, whatever switch type thing we're going to connect to. And then we run it back to this uh, ground right here. Uh, so all these run to this ground, to the single ground. And you can, you can choose any one you want, any one that's not occupied, and you'll be okay. This whole row is outputs. Uh, pin 1 is a PWM output. You don't want to mess with it. And pin 17 is tied to this relay. So these are your outputs that you are free to use.